بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Today we are going to talk about electron neutrality This is very important point when we study the ABG Electron neutrality This means that when we look at the compartment of the body or the extracellular compartment of the body which is the topic of the ABG look at this compartment it is formed of positive and negative charges these are the positive charges and these are the negative charges these are the cations and these are the anions when you look at them the summations of the sum of the cations equal the sum of the anions to all of them they are equals so this is an electron neutrality the positive charges equal the negative charges this is very important but uh, this positive charge and the negative charge within the extracellular fluid or this is usually usually maintained by the integrity of these systems the gas and sinatrate which is meant for absorption and uh, the respiratory tract which is respiratory or the lung which is meant for excretion of carbon dioxide the, the liver which is meant for the senses and the metabolism of the protein and look at the excretory functions of the gas of the kidney in addition to the uh, rule of uh, the skeletal systems uh, and the buffering systems uh, and in the maintenance of the milieu of the extracellular space this is very important uh, when you study it this is an uh, it is important to, to take care that uh, the integrity of the extracellular fluid is maintained through these organs so that's why the electron neutrality is meant uh, that uh, the positive charge equals the negative charge and this uh, kept constant uh, through the gastrointestinal tract through the kidney through the liver through the lung all these organs are meant are important uh, to maintain the, in, the integrity of these systems when you look at this uh, the body fluid compartment uh, are separated usually by by cell membranes and the cell membranes are the important uh, the important uh, 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 part of the of the cells for the integrity for the maintenance uh, of this electron neutrality when we look at uh, the three independent three major independent variables which is carbon dioxide carbon dioxide uh, this is cross membranes easily very easily so it has no share and the uh, uh, and the acid base problem regarding electron neutrality when we look at the total weak acids the total weak acid like protein and organic phosphates uh, proteins the usually they are dominant they cannot cross membrane so they do not have a share in the and the electron neutrality but uh, electron neutrality it is the share of this strong ions sodium potassium chloride this uh, cross the membrane sure they cross the membrane through channels or bumps but uh, there there they are the important part for the electron neutrality share for adjustment uh, and share in the electron neutrality. so this is strong ions when we talk about strong ions look at something like hydrogen ion. hydrogen ions extracellularly when it increases it goes inside the cell for buffering at the same time in exchange with either potassium or sodium to keep the electron neutrality so this is a, a very important and so the cell function is important uh, for the integrity of this uh, look at this how can we benefit from something like that when you look at the positive charge and the negative charge there's some sort of balance between these uh, positive charge and the negative charge when you look at the patients uh, with the hypokalemia this is decrease in the potassium will be associated with increase in the sodium in order to keep the positive charge close to the normal in a balance with the uh, negative charge like a patient with uh, hypokalemia this well it's similar for sure the carbonic anhydrase and so there is a production of bicarbonate absorbed in the form of sodium bicarbonate so hypokalemia will be associated with increases of sodium but sodium bicarbonate the same thing for chloride look at chloride and bicarbonate loss of bicarbonate as in case of diarrhea will be associated with increase in the chloride for the two together the summation of the two to the Chloride plus bicarbonate equals 130 milliequivalent, and so this is a problem with what we call noble and anger. So, decrease in the bicarbonate will be associated with increase in the chloride as in case diarrhea. 
took a look at the reverse in cases of vomiting there is a loss of chloride so the decrease in chloride will be associated with increase in the bicarbonate the two together will be 130 millikeven per liter and this is a what you call this is electroneutrality so this is who benefit from this so this is uh, the same thing uh, only if there is some sort of loss of the kidney so the kidney loss of bicarbonate of the kidney will be associated with increase in the chloride the two together will be 130 so this is uh, one important point to be kept while you are ex explaining and discussing the abg look at this is uh, also a patient who is uh, treated with corticosteroids or under high aldosterone. High aldosterone or corticosteroids will be associated with excess secretions of uh, potassium and at the same time retentions of sodium. So loss of potassium will be associated with increase in the sodium to keep the electron neutrality and accordingly sodium will be absorbed with waste chloride with bicarbonate so a patient with corticosteroids or the aldosterone treatment uh, will have uh, metabolic uh, alkalosis. The same thing for reduction of glomerular filtration rate as in hypovolemia. The hypovolemias or dehydrations, uh, the rest system will be stimulated uh, and aldosterone will be increased and aldosterone will stimulate the carbonic anhydrase so there is an uh, increase in the sodium bicarbonate absorption. So this is uh, another way, loss of so potassium, retention of sodium, with bicarbonate so, so this is the electroneutrality we should take care while we are discussing that so this is a, an important to conclude so this is a balance between sodium and the potassium increasing in potassium will associate with the decrease in sodium decrease in the potassium will be associated with increase in sodium the, th the same thing for the chloride loss of, uh, uh, of or decrease in the bicarbonate will be associated with increase in the chloride decrease in the chloride will be associated with increase and this usually happens when we are talking about loss or gain through the gastrointestinal tract or through the kidneys through cells this is important uh, point the same thing when you look at uh, the total weak acids and its relations with bicarbonate total weak acid which is uh, protein albumin and the globulins uh, plus inorganic phosphate they form about 16 milliequivalent per liter uh, and this is tw this 24 for sodium bicarbonate the two together forms 40 which is the buffer base we are going to talk about it or oh, this is the strong ion differences increase decrease and this uh, total weak acid uh, decrease in the albumin hypoalbuminemia or hypophosphatemia will be associated with increase in the bicarbonate to give us also the summation is 40. So hypoalbuminemia will be associated with uh, metabolic alkalosis. On the reverse, in the hyperalbuminemia or hyperphosphatemia will be associated with decrease, uh, a compensatory decrease uh, of the bicarbonate. This is electroneutrality. The two together, these negative charges are 40. Increase in one will be associated uh, with decreasing the other or decreasing one will be associated with increasing the other. So this is an uh, electroneutrality we should take care while we are, inter while we are inter uh, interpreting the ABG. And this is the same thing as I've mentioned, the increase in these uh, total weak acids will be associated with, with decrease in the bicarbonate. Decrease in the total weak acid will be associated with increase in the bicarbonate. So this is important. The same thing we have mentioned before, this is the potassium hydrogen ion exchange in acidosis uh, for electron neutrality. Hydrogen ion goes inside the cell for buffering and the potassium goes outside. In alkalosis, uh, the hydrogen ion goes outside and the potassium goes inside. So this is another, this is uh, electroneutrality. So when we discuss electroneutrality, look at bicarbonate and chloride. Increase in bicarbonate will be a to decrease in chloride. Or the, the and the vice versa, and this should be so decrease or decrease should be through the gastrointestinal tract or the kidney, and this is a normal and ion gap changes. The same thing when you look at the, the total weak acids, the relations between bicarbonate and the albumin. Increase in the album will be associated with decrease in the in the bicarbonate. Increase and decrease in the album will be associated with increase in the bicarbonate. And this is uh, will help us in what we call corrected anion gap. We're going to, to, to talk about it. And look at potassium and sodium and hypokalemia will be associated uh, with increased with stimulations of carbonic anhydrase uh, and retention of sodium bicarbonate. So this is uh, another important part. I think this is uh, and the electroneutrality deserves uh, 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 noticing and at the same time understanding in order to make a uh, good interpretations uh, to the path of physiology of the ABG and thank you.